Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, tasting two Lapsangs. In this video, I'm here with Celine and we're gonna be talking about this world famous black tea and then we're gonna be doing a comparative tasting. This video is gonna go under the Drinking With Friends and the Tea Master Classes playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then Press that button. That's the one. Okay, <laughs> so the world famous Lapsang Souchong, the first ever black tea produced. It is well known around the world. Yeah. yeah? And um, I think that we should start with a little bit of the history of this tea. I actually don't know the history of okay. Lapsang, apart well, from the fact that French people love it. Yeah, so <laughs> being half French, she knows that the French have an obsession with this really high smoked Lapsang. So Lapsang Souchong, the history of it is, well, let's go back to Fujian province. Okay. Fujian province around Wuyi mountains, um, around the 1600s, early 1600s, some um, people from the north of this area um, moved into a village area called Tongmu and Tongmu is a beautiful uh, village area, UNESCO protected um, village area, mountainous area, high up around uh, above 1000 meters, 1000 to 1500 meters and it forms part of a valley, a high mountain valley pass. Mm. Stunningly beautiful area, okay. These uh, settlers moved in uh, to escape the military um, issues that were happening in China. This is when China was having a lot of uh, armies battling against each other. Um, and they wanted to find refuge in Tongmu. And so they yeah. settled in Tongmu. They found that they couldn't really grow much in terms of food there. The, the environment wasn't particularly hospitable. But what they could grow is tea. And so they started to produce uh, green tea. So mm. Tongmu green tea. And that continued. Some time later, mid 1600s, the story goes, a general, an army general, um, wanted to uh, surprise or find a new route towards his enemy. And so he instructed his men to go through Tongmu Pass, to go through this mountainous village area, this valley in Tongmu. And mm -hmm. so the army started to enter these villages. All the villagers fled, yeah. went to the, to the forest apparently. Again, this is the story. We don't know how much of it's true, but went to the forest and basically stayed in the forest while the soldiers rudely entered their home, oh, uh, no. ate all their food um, and basically, um, you know, uh, stayed there for a couple of days to refuel before heading further um, out. So rude. But they, su they um, happened to come at the time when they were producing their green tea. So they had just picked the leaves, the leaves had been harvested, they were producing this green tea and uh, they were getting ready to go through the firing process of the green tea, then the, this army arrived, they fled and so the leaf oxidized, the leaf basically over oxidized oh, over a couple of days and turned black. And so supposedly this is the first instance of black tea being made. So black tea doesn't really have a long history in China, yeah. despite the fact that That's it's... That's so interesting because I always yeah. thought that it was much longer. And the fact that it's always when an accident happens that yeah. something new happy Happy accidents. Happy yeah, accidents. Love happy always accidents. embrace the happy accidents. True. So, um, so black tea, you know, started in the 1600s. Mm. Um, and basically these villagers returned and found that their tea had been, according to them, ruined. Right. Uh, right yeah. um, and so, um, and, uh, you know, over oxidized and maybe damaged. And so um, it kind of smelt a bit strange and it wasn't what they were used to. And so what they decided to do or what one bright person at the village decided to do was to lightly smoke the tea mm. over um, horsetail pine wood, which grows in this Wuyi area. So it's a kind of pine wood yeah. um, and just kind of smoke it to try to take away some of this kind of um, Funny army funk smell. smell, I guess. I don't know. Um, and so basically <laughs> they kind of lightly smoked this, this, this new ruined tea and then they um, carried it down to Xingchun. Xingchun yeah. is the area where the river joins and then they um, managed to convince a trader to take their damaged tea and mm. see if they could sell it. Anyway, um, months went on and when the trader returned, 
to do more deals with these air, these uh, tea people in uh, Fujian province, yeah. he said that it commanded a very uh, good price and that he wanted more of the smoked black tea. Ah. And so this smoked black tea started to become something that was exported a lot. Yeah. Um, and it became, you know, well known. Tongmu became well known for this smoked black tea. Now, apparently as the uh, foreign taste, because then it started yeah. to be um, exported. Uh, exported to uh, foreign lands, um, and it used to be f uh, exported as buhi. Buhi, you What's probably B O H E A. You see this kind of name for tea, and that is yeah. probably from a uh, bastardization of Wuyi, Wuyi Mountains, Buhi. Uh, you know, I don't know how these things happen. Can't they Me, listen a little bit, a bit <laughs> yeah. closer? Anyway, so it became very popular and it started to, they started to request, the traders started to request for more and more heavily smoked tea. Uh, so the original uh, Tongmu Lapsang Sushong, the original smoked tea yeah. was very lightly smoked, um, probably over wet woods or very lightly smoked. And then they started to smoke with aged woods that had more resin and mm. became more tarry and had that very thick smoky taste. Mm. Okay. But so, if they had tried it without smoking it, maybe they would have thought, let's keep it like that. Well, so this is what happened in, oh. in around 2005, 2006. Um, a, a government official asked the people in Tongmu to make an unsmoked black oh, tea. They actually asked them. Yeah. So, you know, can you make an unsmoked black tea as a yeah. gift tea and only make it from the buds? And only make it from the buds and make an unsmoked black tea. That was a good and idea. this became Jinjin Mei, right? Uh, so Jinjin Mei became the, the most popular black tea um, in the most expensive black tea, I should say, and the most revered black tea. We've done videos about a video about Jinjin Mei. I'll put a link in the description below. And it is a very expensive tea is. and it's made from the same cultivars in the same area as the original Lapsang Souchong, mm -hmm. but is made from the buds. And now what's happened is yeah. that the uh, people in Tongmu basically have kind of um, started to move away from smoking the tea mm. because smoking the tea has started to be considered to be lower quality oh, and then that has become a self-fulfilling prophecy because what's happening is that they're now purchasing or traders are now purchasing their Lapsang Sushong, their smoked tea from other areas like Hubei nearby and oh. that produces much lower quality tea. And so oh, wow. the quality of Lapsang Sushong, of smoked tea, is declining. Which makes sense because the, the reason why they first smoked it is because they thought the tea was ruined. So if you've got low quality tea, then why not smoke it? It just covers up everything. Yeah, but, but then they spent, you know, 200 years or 300 years like making very high quality Tongmu because the terroir in Tongmu, and this is what we were going to get onto, mm. the terroir in Tongmu is amazing for this. It makes really? a really incredibly intense flavored tea. Mm. And so you can imagine the original Tongmu tea that's yeah. then smoked because it can handle the smoke because it's strong enough in flavor yeah. it could make a really nice mix uh, and I remember when we first started purchasing uh, smoked teas 15 years ago the quality was much higher than it is now really? and now when you get smoked tea this is why we haven't stopped yeah. smoked tea for we three for two one, three years ages. because all of the good tea is being used for unsmoked now all of the good tea is being used for unsmoked yeah. and, the, and the Hubei um, tea is being mm. used for smoked and that produces lower quality. I was thinking like the first time, I w the first year I worked in uh, China Life, I found that the Lapsang was much lighter, like the yeah. smokiness. Well, there's two, there's different styles of smoking. So the original yeah. smile, the original smile, the original <laughs> style is, uh, is a light smoked. Um, and then, as, as I said, the foreigners started to request more heavy smoked tea. And ah. so it became this very heavy yen zheng shan xiao zhong. And mm. so now, if you want to get really high quality smoked zheng shan xiao zhong, good luck. It's very, very <laughs> difficult to find. You can probably try to get some from Tongmu, but pretty much it's now unsmoked. And I think it's actually, for me, it's, it's much better for it because these teas are so delicious by themselves. Yeah, and we're going to taste um, some of them. And so what we have here, the reason why we're covering it is not for dramatic effect, <laughs> but it's because it was been raining hey, a little bit. do it the dramatic effect. Sorry. Effect. Well. <laughs> um, so we have here two unsmoked Lapsang Souchongs. The name Lapsang Souchong, in case you uh, were wondering, comes from a, again, a kind of a phonetic uh, mismatch of, uh, of 
Jiangshan, Xiaozhong. Jiangshan is the area. Xiaozhong, Xiaozhong is a kind of small leaf uh, variety. So mm. uh, Jiangshan, Xiaozhong became Lapsang Souchong. And um, it's very important that <laughs> if you see Lapsang Souchong, you need to ask, is it smoked or unsmoked? Mm. Okay, so we have two here. And what I wanted to do is do a comparative tasting because these teas are both incredible. Yum. And they pretty much share exactly the same scope. Yeah, I was I, I noticed that on your on your descriptions. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very similar. So um, season, they're both April 2017. So spring picked April 2017. The cultivar same, Xin Xinchun uh, Xiaozhong. So the small leaf cultivar that grows famously in this area. Um, origin, both from Tongmu. So these are original Tongmu uh, lapsangs. Um, so both from Tongmu. Uh, picking and processing. Well, you can see here that the picking on this one looks like slightly larger leaves than mm. this one. This one's a little bit more um, picked a, a little bit earlier, I think. So it was picked at slightly different times, but essentially pretty much the same. What they do mm. is they pick it, they wither it, they will roll it, they will allow it to oxidize, and then will roast it. But they won't roast it over um, these pine woods to smoke it. What they'll do instead is they'll roast it usually over clean fuel or hot air. Oh, very okay. Good. Elevation, this one's slightly higher. This one's 1,500, this one's 1,200 meters, but both high elevation tea. So everything is almost identical on scope, and yet the taste is very different. Very and this different. is the incredible thing about Tongmu and the variety. It's like it's this, they, they've got some magic up there. And I think <laughs> it is to do with the terroir. And I've spoken to um, the producers and and ask them to AB the two farmers to taste each other's teas and they're basically saying that it's just to do with the area that oh, the really? flavor difference is pretty much not to do with picking and processing but is literally just to do with the which side of the mountain mm. the area oh it's like uh, with uh, poor teas it's exactly the same thing oh. all right let's brew this up because I'm conscious okay. of time I'll do um, it. and oh, so just so you know this one here is called little Tongmu fresh in um, 2017 teas these are and this one here is called Suchong liquor Suchong liquor and little Tongmu yeah go for it thank you very much so how they make the smoked type of Lapsang Suchong is what they do is um, after it's gone through the the withering and the oxidation phase they will um, put it um, in a room with, with a, a floor which has um, got um, holes in it and there will light pine wood fires. Um, depending on the style, if it's a lighter smoke, they might use younger or wet wood. If it's a heavier smoke, then they'll use the aged wood with lots more resin and much more of that tarry taste. It's interesting because there's an issue in the EU at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's all right. There's an issue in the EU at the moment with uh, importing smoked teas. Oh, yeah, that's they're, true. they're starting I to make that. it illegal to import smoked teas, so a lot of people are struggling. Let's, um, okay, we'll smell the, the, the wet leaves. Yeah, smell the wet Cause leaves. Because I really want to do a nice comparative taste, and we should really smell the dry leaves. Sorry. That's all right. I, 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 I'm so thirsty, guys. Sorry. <laughs> mm. Okay, oh, so you have a smell. sniff yeah. of Instant. little Tongmu. And I will have a sniff of Sushong liquor while we pour, anoint this little pig. Oh. We're just getting these pigs in um, to mm. May Leaf as another pet. And this is its first tea wash, so it gets the joy of getting high quality Tongmu. Right. It smells kind of leathery and fruity at the same time. Mmm. It's. Um, it's got mm. wet wood. Yeah, definitely wet wood. But it's got a, a hazelnut, yeah. granola, and the fruit is raspberries. Maybe even dry yeah, raspberries. Yeah, it's like when you, you smell it from afar, you start to smell the raspberry hitting your nose. It's raspberry, isn't it? It's crazy. But when you go closer, it's like, it's more the woody notes. Like, Why don't you show the camera the leaves? Oh, it's yummy. It smells yummy. Try and get as close as you can. Duh. Okay, there you go. So let me put the, bring the other leaves. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> we're in for a treat today. I'm telling you, we're in for a treat today. Um, okay. So. Mm, smells good. Smell this one. 
Oh my god, so completely different. different. Totally, so different. totally different. This it's is what's just completely crazy is that this is the same cultivar in the same area and just the, 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 the slight differences in picking and processing and the slight differences in where it's picked, different flavor. The funny thing is, right, I've tasted both of these teas like throughout the week, but some days you just pick up notes so much better than other days. What are you picking up? It's instant, like 70% dark chocolate. Yeah is what hits you you know yeah this has got more of a tang this is more like um <gasps> it's got more of a citrusy Yum. zesty tang it's got a bit more yogurt yeah raspberry yogurt raspberry yogurt that's oh my god it's that raspberry yogurt um, it totally changed as it evaporated a little bit yeah it went from woody to more raspberry yeah. and fruity always leave the lid off a little bit that's so nice and don't miss out this part when you're brewing don't. tea please 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 i Just do that a lot and take your time you take know. your time because this is this is so much part of the enjoyment it kind of smells a bit like a chocolate ice cream as well you know like dark chocolate it's got mixed more, with like it's also got almost like a, a slight da hong pao kind of funkiness to it oh really i i'm thinking that one of the differences might be how this was roasted that it may yeah, be yeah. roasted over what? It may be roasted over charcoal, longan wood charcoal or something. It may be a oh, little bit maybe. given a roast. I think that maybe. the farmers were not being completely, totally... They um, don't want to tell you the secrets. They don't want to give me the secrets. <laughs> but what's amazing is yeah. that... Should I brew it? Yeah, brew it. Right. So we've got, just so you know, we have um, seven grams of each tea in... These are about 100... Depending on where you fill it up, 150 to 170. And we're using 90 degree water, which is um, 205 Fahrenheit. No, 195 Fahrenheit. And we're going to brew for about 10 seconds. You're going for a double brew, aren't you? Yep. No. I need the filter. I just, want, a, I just want to taste them next to each other properly, you know. Okay, well, show the liquor. I haven't really show the done liquor, that. Show the liquor. Okay. So that people can see uh, the difference. It's not too much of a it's difference, It's not too but much difference, but it is, it is slightly different. Yeah, I mean, right, this, this one, one is darker. darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, um, the Souchong liquor is a darker liquor. liquor um, oh, <laughs> but beautiful kind of orange caramel color, right? Yeah, very nice. Real nice orange caramel color. Very nice. Okay. I'm getting rained on. I know. We're <laughs> determined to do this outside today. <laughs> yeah. We set up and then lovely London weather happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes. how are we going to do this? Blind blind taste? Oh, there's no need, but do you want to do that? No, it's very... Oh, no, you can do it. Do, do it. do it. It's always worthwhile, Close isn't your it? eyes. Close your eyes. If I don't get the difference between them, then pretty much... Uh, <laughs> I might as well. Okay. Go home, even though I already am. You can, you're closing your eyes, yes? Yes, I'm closing my eyes. People think we cheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So much, I know. We don't cheat. Where's the fun in playing a game if you're cheating? So good. It kind of mm. reminds me a little bit of... Um, it reminds me a lot of Ginger and me. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Mm. It's got those uh, notes. Mm. Although ginger may is definitely more, more. So the first fragrant. one was Souchong, right? Yeah, that was this yeah, one. Yeah, Souchong liquor, right? <laughs> so, um, and this is actually a really important point because we've done a video about ginger and may, and I've talked a, a, a fair amount about how I think that there's um, there is there's very high quality ginger and may, which is um, which have these kind of chocolate, cocoa, and rose notes, and then there's kind of I would say secondary grade ginger and may, which looks very pretty and is either very malty or you can get That's true. actually. So the best one after the chocolatey one is the flowery ginger and yeah. may, right? The ones that, that <sighs> taste quite flowery. Um, I don't think it's as high quality as the chocolatey one, but it's more flowery. And that is, I would say, kind of the flowery. Close, closer to this. Yeah. And then you get the ones that are just made from buds and taste malty and don't taste much yeah. of anything at I all. I really like those ones. They look really beautiful, yeah. but no, nothing really special in terms of the taste. And this is very similar. So you get this kind of, generally two kind of flavor strains, isn't it? You get the flowery yeah. Yeah. and then you get the chocolatey, right? Yeah. This has flowers, it has fruit. They, they both have 
um, similar elements, yeah. but um, certainly there's this similarity, and that must be to do with picking, processing, and um, the terroir, the the actual area. It's so interesting. So, what tastes are we getting here? Let's go for let's let's mm. taste. Yeah, let's taste let's properly. Taste this Which one? one? This let's one. Let's taste Tongmu. Little okay, Tongmu. Little Tongmu. Here we go. Concentrating your mind on the taste buds. It kind of Cheers. reminds me a little bit of Eastern Beauty. Mm. Yeah, big time. It's got that yes. kind of um, fruity, zesty, those zesty terpenes, bright notes. I get more of the um, the um, muscat grape. Muscat, but yeah, not yeah, and yeah, not yeah, as yeah. honeyed, not as honeyed as an Eastern Beauty. No, true. Not as sweet as an Eastern Beauty, but definitely those those high notes, those uh, zesty um, lemony roses. Definitely a bit of lilac in there, mm. and it's it's. But you know, it's not as sweet as Eastern Beauty, but it's very smooth. So really it's not like. bug bitten. It doesn't have that hot tree and all. It doesn't have True. those honey notes, but it definitely has True. some of those those very floral notes and I think it's such a great tea if you want to rediscover mm. black tea or you kind of feel like you've neglected black tea these teas are the perfect place to start yeah. because they or or even finish because they are really great high quality very flavorful black teas that really kind of are a world away from any of those um any of those cut tea bag teas oh miles and miles away but even the smoked away. lapsangs, even those smoked lapsangs now tend to be very broken leaf, tend to be very poor quality. That's true. Um, and you it's can, just yeah, a shame. It's a real shame. Okay, let's um, put these away. Now we're going to taste the mm -hmm. Souchong liquor. Souchong liquor. I actually drank more of the little Tongmu recently than the Souchong liquor, so I can't remember. Souchong liquor much. has just arrived in, so this yeah. is uh, this is fresh. Mm. Mm. Oh. oh man. Okay, what are you getting? Chocolate. <laughs> You're still on the chocolate, right? Yeah, it's it's just it hits your nose like No definitely. So quickly. And I think it's because we're tasting them next oh. to each other, you really get the strong first flavours smells coming through. Oh my god, but yeah, smell the difference. When is you do crazy. That. The the difference is totally, totally crazy. Oh, that smells like a perfume. It's sm yeah. Really, and really smells like chocolate. <laughs> fruity and flowery, and then chocolatey. And this chocolate, but it's got more than chocolate. So this has more kind of wet wood. Yeah. And this has more dry or charred wood. It's got more of a burnt wood kind of <sighs> note. This definitely has got that deeper, more burnt kind of slightly burnt brownies kind oh, of yeah, yeah, taste, yeah. right? And this is more musty, musky yeah. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Scent. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It's incredible. Let's do another infusion. Okay, so good. I think that the second yeah, infusions. Yeah, I, I like second infusions. I like second infusions. But my advice to everybody is, if you want to try, if you really want to know uh, the flavor profile that a ginger may, a good high mm. quality, you know, very expensive ginger may, is going to taste like, then get yourself some Souchong liquor. Yeah, true. Because Souchong liquor is pretty close. I mean, it's. And for a fraction, a real fraction of the price, but it's pretty close to the kind of uh, flavor palette that Jinjin May has. It's got the chocolate, it's got some flowers, it has got some fruit, but the fruit is less of those lychees, maybe more moving to um, um, less perfumed versions of lychees, yeah. you know? Yeah, because um, Jinjin May is very fragrant. Yeah, but Jinjin May is very sweet rose and, and lychee. Light. Whereas this is more, this is uh, more warm, this kind is more... of apple skin, yeah. fruit, you know that kind of uh, note. But it's it's a really close uh, approximation to the palette of flavors of a ginger and May. Yeah, but it's still I find it still quite very different. <laughs> They're different, you know. I, I, I would say that this one is more. Quick oh, sorry, is more bassy. It's got more of the, the those um, those charred. Almost like a whiskey kind of bourbon char kind of, you know, those kind yeah. of burnt casks, you know, charred casks. Look at the color difference. Let's just show the color difference. Yeah. You can see how that's now really starting to express itself in the second infusion. Hold on one second, just to make sure it's in focus. Yeah, okay. So you've got little Tongmu and Souchong liquor, little Tongmu, more floral, more zesty, 
uh, Souchon liquor got those darker notes. Mm. Such a nice color. Let's have a, oops, sorry, I spilt your tea. <gasps> it's all right, I wanted to try the second infusion. Okay, second infusion, where we're right. starting. Let's start this with one. Souchon. Yeah, I agree. Oh, look at the color on that. <laughs> it's so, so pretty, such, I hope this camera's getting it. such a beautiful color. Yeah. Mmm, rich, rich, rich. There you get the, the burnt brownies. My goodness. Burnt chocolate brownies. This is perfect for my chocolate cravings. <laughs> this would pair. Well, although you never know, but it, it, it may pair very well with a chocolate dish. Or it may pair very well with a fruit like um, raisins or something like that. You know how you get that, you want that Does roast to, cover, yes. to, 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 to combine with the raisins. What's that dessert that has raisins in it that's kind of like a cake, like kind of dry-ish? Anyway, someone, some kind of. I know exactly you know? what you mean, but I have no idea what they're called. Yeah. I think they're quite British. I think they are. The the raisins and chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, if any of you that know, would go it, really then well. let us know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Such a lovely tea. That's really good. And the thing is, it's 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 just if you uh, blind have you if you had done a blind tasting of these two teas. I would really not have predicted that they are coming from exactly the same plant, from exactly the same area. Just, just taste it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's crazy how different they are. Totally. Crazy. More minerality. I love that second infusion. It just brings out all the notes together. It's like little flowers sprouting. Yeah, it's exactly what cup. I was about to say. It's like little flowers, isn't it? Like <laughs> yeah, growing like, on like a chalky on chalky soil. Yes. It's got that chalky, like floral, zesty, yeah. fresh, great summer tea. <sighs> this would be something you'd have, like you know, as I bet that would make a really nice iced tea as well. Yes, hundred percent. And this is more your late night whiskey. Mm. This is more your kind of late night bourbon totally. whiskey. Yeah. You know, your liquor. You sit there and you yeah. taste those kind of charred casks and you yeah. taste that chocolate and it's really nice. When you don't want to eat your chocolate because you're eating too much chocolate, have that instead. This is true actually. That's what I'm going to do. This gives you the, the cocoa <laughs> craving. Yeah. Covers that cocoa craving. I have such a big cocoa craving. Okay, the reason I'm drinking them quickly is because I want to smell this empty gong dao bay. Oh, good one. <laughs> Shots. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm, a lot of those um, dark chocolate notes. It's quite a um, light liquor, I was thinking in my mouth. It's not too mm. thick, isn't it? It's quite... It's, I would say that the texture, we didn't talk about texture. I would say both of them are similar texture, right? They're yeah, kind of similar texture. Both medium. Yeah. Medium texture, not yeah. super thick. But very rich in flavour. Very rich in flavour. Very flavor, rich in flavour. Just very light in texture. I, would I wouldn't say. say very light. It's not as light as a green tea. No, not as light as a green tea. But lighter than an oolong. Mm. Very big generalisations okay. you're making. Never mind. But yeah, <laughs> maybe. Smelling the pot. <laughs> They're both medium. They're both medium. And the finish on them, I would say it's quite dry, right? But it has yeah. a slight juiciness. It's not really fair because we should really be tasting each one individually, so they're kind of affecting each other. But um, I, don't, I don't know. I find it hard to. Oh. Is it a bit malty? Is it malty? Oh, oh. Yes. Bread. Mm, bready. Like a bready malty. Yeah, bready. Definitely like um, a malt malt loaf. Yeah. Malt loaf. It's malt loaf. It's like gingery, you know those gingery malt loaves? Yeah. If like you've never had malt loaf, it's one of my addictions, like you can't buy malt loaf. If you buy malt loaf and it enters this house, it's gone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the that soft one, isn't it? That gin Soft and squidgy and chewy and then you toast it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. got oh, raisins in it and then you put butter on it. it. Oh, I'm that's right, that I can't, no, don't. <laughs> It smells uh, like malt loaf. It's got those raisins in the malt loaf. It's got that slight ginger note to it. Oh, is that this one? This mm. is Tonglu, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Little Tonglu. Yeah, malty. Let's give the pig a little bit. It's gonna have a little taste. Little piggy. I just want to smell this um, empty Gongdao Bay. Oh, 
totally different. Smell that. It's like sour plums. Oh my god, it smells like holidays. <laughs> <laughs> this is really weird, but... Oh, Mishkin's here. Oh, hi, Mishmash. Hey, Mish. Hello. You want to join us? Oh, okay. You can take him. Um, yeah, on. sour plums, oh. zesty roses. I keep getting these lemony roses. Lemony roses, and you know what? It reminds me of uh, when you walk through a pine, like a uh, pine forest, but it's very dry. Yeah. Like in South of France. <laughs> south of France. She's always referring That's to the South holidays. of France. That's my holidays. That's all I know about my holidays from my childhood is South of France. <laughs> Anyway, so two teas, two black teas, two Lapsang Souchongs, unsmoked from the same area, exactly the same scope, pretty close in terms of elevation, pretty close in terms of picking and processing. Yeah. Supposedly, according to the information that I've been given, the, the main key difference in the flavor profile is terroir, is where it was picked. Probably the season has a, you know, if it was picked a week or two apart, then that probably makes a difference. Mm. And I think that the Souchong liquor has been roasted a bit harder. Mm. But in general, it's the same tea and yet they taste completely different. And I highly recommend if you want to uh, taste what unsmoked Lapsang should taste like, that you get both of these and you A-B them together, yeah. you'll be amazed at the difference it's, in the taste. It's so nice in the to taste. do it to an A and B. Anyway, is that mine? Yeah, I think so, even though I wanted it to be mine. Oh, here we can share Thank it. Thank you. Um, okay, so the rain is starting to come down. I think we should end it here. So Gorgeous fragrant. teas. You need to try them. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you'd like us to make. If you're ever in sunny London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, this is Celine. I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread, spread the, word the word because nobody deserves bad, bad tea. No, no. Bye. Bye.